Hi and welcome to this week's web design video blog. Today we're going to look at a bit of a different way of removing the white backgrounds on um, images like uh, of models. We've got a couple here that we're going to work with today. And also perhaps product images that have got nice clear white backgrounds because they've been photographed perhaps in a studio. Um, you know, but we want to remove the backgrounds so that we can use them and place them onto different uh, different environments. Now it's worth bearing in mind that with pictures that have white backgrounds um, like these pictures that we're going to be using here today, they're not really going to work, if we cut away the background, they're not really going to work on dark backgrounds. The effect that we're going to do is really um, for using these sort of pictures that have got perhaps detail in the background, like there's a little bit of shadow here on the bear, and also um, when you're using pictures of models they might have quite a bit of hair, and simply cutting away the edges and trying to place these images on dark backgrounds won't really look very nice. So this tutorial and this sort of effects based on uh, removing the white backgrounds from these images and using the images on very light like pastel coloured backgrounds that are not too far off white. Okay so um, here's a bit of a basic canvas area, I've got a gradient going from like a pastel green to pink and let's maybe start by using the picture of the female model. So I'm simply pasting this onto this uh, background and like I mentioned, if we were to start sort of cutting away pieces of this, we're going to lose a bit of detail around the uh, the hair. And uh, this effect allows us to keep the background. We're not even going to cut it away um, using the blend mode multiply that you can find in your layers panel. So if you're familiar with multiply, you'll know that it sort of um, takes away the white from the image and allows the background to come through where the white was. Now the problem with um, pictures that we're using here, for example, like the models, they've got quite a, uh, a lot of white on their face where the where the light appears, and also obviously in the in the white of their eyes. So you can quite clearly see that the the pink and green background coming through the picture of the model. Now, if that didn't happen, it would be great because the multiply tool simply takes all of the white away and allows the background to come through. So what we want to do to be able to work with this blend uh, with this layer blend mode is we're going to create a new layer underneath that picture and let's just put that out of the way and we're going to select the paintbrush tool so I've got a nice um, fuzzy broad brush selected and I've got the opacity of the brush set to 100% now if I was to simply click on this new layer that we've created and start painting on the face of the model you'll see that the white is starting to return where, I've, uh, where I'm essentially painting. Now if I be careful and don't get too close to the edges I can actually restore quite a lot of the original tone, original whites of the image, but maintaining that perfect blend that you can see here on the edges around the hair above the ear for example. So let me just hide that layer and allow you to sort of see the before and after. So this is a really nice effect to remove white backgrounds using the multiply layer blend mode um, but keeping the original sort of white tone coming through in the image. Let's try a different one. So let's hide those two layers and let's get our chap involved. So this will help me highlight a little bit more what we were referring to with the hair. So let's paste him in. Let's perhaps move him over a bit. And again, let's apply our multiply, multiply blend. And again, you'll see a huge difference there. When we apply the blend, it's clear that the orange background is really coming through in his face. You know, and if this was a, a graphic for a slide on a web page, for example, it's really obvious that the uh, photograph is not really native to the background. Okay, so again, I'm going to make a new layer underneath. And I'm going to do the same thing. So paintbrush. Got my colour set to white, 100% opacity, and again, staying away from the edges, I'm just going to start to paint a new layer in between the background and our photograph. Now, obviously, I'm doing this very quickly. Um, usually, when I do this on live work, I alternate between the sizes of the brush and also play around with the opacity. So, let's perhaps make the brush a little bit smaller and get a little bit more of this detail out by his hand, for example. And maybe we'd want to go right over and get that finger 
in like so. Okay, so because you've been watching this happen quite gradually, you may not have noticed the difference, but again, if we hide this white layer behind the model, you can quite clearly see the difference there. And if you notice the area on the sides of his hair, we've got a, a perfect um, match where the background's coming through all the little details, all the little gaps where the background's present through the curls in his hair. It's a really nice effect. So let's do uh, let's do one more perhaps. Let's uh, let's clear all this away, and let's go grab that picture of the teddy bear. Okay, so I'm pasting that onto the page. Let's pop him there. And for the last time, let's just pop on the. Uh, ooh, let's just bring this over so you can see. Simply go into the layer, blend, and multiply. So again, this bear looks very yellowy. Um, doesn't quite look right at all. But like I mentioned a moment ago, if you use the multiply blend mode, you get to preserve a little bit of detail that might be present on the white background. Down here, for example, you can see the shadows of the bear. Okay, so for the last time, let's make a new layer below the bear. Move that back out of the way. Let's select our paintbrush. Again, same process as before, staying away from the edges. I can always come back and get a little bit close to them, zoom in later on. Let's just make it a little bit smaller, maybe turn the opacity down to 40% and just go a little bit closer to the edges. Again, I'm just doing this very quickly. You'll probably want to zoom in and go into a lot more detail to get this right. And again, if we hide the layer, you'll see the effect that we've created there. We've managed to preserve the uh, reflection and the shadow of the bear on the white background, um, that, which is one of the great benefits of having the uh, multiplied blend mode. But by simply creating a layer in between your background and your photograph with the white background, use the white paintbrush Sorry, use um, the paintbrush with color set to white and just paint within the boundaries of your image and you can create some really nice effects without having to go to the trouble of getting the magic wand out or using the color select mode. So I hope the technique's been helpful for you. If you have any questions, comments or contributions, please don't hesitate to leave them on our supporting blog post.